Starting about five years ago, we realized that GPS is very brittle. GPS is a series of satellites, of course. There's now four GPS systems around the world. The U.S. has launched one many years ago. Europe has one. Russia has one. And China has one. Russia and China realized uh, that they needed their own mm -hmm. resilient GPS system uh, uh, in case that we turned off ours against them. And so they have their own. Uh, U.S. and Europe have them. But Unfortunately, the GPS signal is very easy to jam. It's an yeah, it also can be spoofed, right? I mean, you can create false GPS signals right. and lead someone the exact wrong direction. That's right. And that's happening right now. Various adversaries are spoofing GPS. Um, if you want to jam GPS, you can, you can literally go online. It's not legal, so please don't do it. But uh, if you go online, you can find little boxes. They look like large walkie-talkies, essentially. And you can jam GPS for your entire neighborhood. Uh, and if you have a bigger one, you could jam it over a whole city. Mm. And that's right now is what Russia is doing over Ukraine. Uh, it's what Iran is doing in much of the Gulf region. It's what China is doing uh, in and around Taiwan. It's happening right now. This is, uh, this is, was front page Wall Street Journal just two weeks ago. Literally the digital front page and the physical front page uh, <laughs> was, this, was this issue. Uh, it, it impacts both defense, national security, as well as the civilian aerospace. Thousands of flights since the beginning of this year have been disrupted. Some have had to land other places. Finnair, as an example, one of the, one of the Scandinavian airlines has had to cut routes uh, to the Baltic regions because it simply cannot get their planes there. They cannot get the planes due to lack of GPS. And that's on jamming and spoofing, Peter. And of course, we know, we know, this is public info, China and Russia have both announced capability to take satellites out, yeah. to take them out of the sky. Unfortunately, uh, so it we, I mean, we've built an amazing dependency on GPS. Um, and of course, the other thing is GPS doesn't work underwater, um, where you, right. you, the signal gets attenuated very quickly with like, you know, just a tiny amount of water. Either underwater, bingo. Yeah. You get yeah. GPS. So underwater is an issue as well, as well as also underneath uh, in tunnels. And if you're doing, uh, you know, you're in caves or you're looking for different uh, minerals uh, under, under the earth. Again, no GPS uh, to be had there. So how does quantum sensing solve this problem? So what do we do? We realize that, okay, we've got finally mapping of the world from the magnetic map point of view. Various satellites have been sent up over the past uh, two decades to actually map this uh, field. And it turns out that while the core field of the Earth that comes from the molten iron that is revolving, that is rotating around, so let me say it again, uh, we have the core field of the Earth, uh, and that is a magnetic field that is a result of the molten iron that's moving around, around the core iron ball in the center of our Earth. Uh, and that creates a homogenous field. So you can't really navigate with that because it's, it's the same in all directions. It's, it's too broad. Side. Yeah. Right? It's a spherical field. It's the same in all directions. But here's what happens. As that field moves through our crust, our crust has various minerals in it. and mm -hmm. Uh, it has a number of minerals that are ferromagnetic. Ferromagnetic means that they're not themselves innately magnetic, but they can be magnetized, right? Just like a paperclip. Iron, it's nickel, cobalt, all kinds of things. Yeah. And, and so uh, magnetite, hematite, these are two of the minerals that we find randomly distributed in our crust. And that random distribution is very helpful because it warps the core field into a local signature. Mm -hmm. And and so when you actually pass over the Earth, you can see different distributions. And now that we've mapped it, we can navigate with the crustal field. So the this is like a this is like a magnetic fingerprint um, right. of a of a region. And is it really of high enough fidelity for me to know where I am <clears throat> on my you know, here in Santa Monica or you know in a sub off the coast of Kalamata, Greece? I mean, it's that it's that level of fidelity you yeah, just let the, the viewers know peter right now is in a submarine off the coast of Greece. <laughs> it's wonderful technology great to, to see you peter uh, but uh but in, in fact it is it is ability so just like if you go back to google earth and google street view when google earth first launched uh more than a decade ago it was a bit rough around the edges the resolution wasn't great in all areas and then over time google filled in uh, these spaces with higher and higher resolution images, ultimately getting down to Street View. And now even they 
that sent people into inside museums and you can now navigate inside a museum. And that's what will happen with the magnetic uh, field maps of our Earth. We have very, very good maps today because of many satellites that have taken these magnetic images over a two decade period. But um, of course, if people have an area of interest, they can drag a magnetometer, a magnetic sensor over that area of interest and get even higher resolution. Mm -hmm. We'll see that happening over the coming years. But back to the main uh, story. So given this magnetic map and given a sensor, uh, a quantum sensor, you can actually detect where that magnetic field is and how it's looking square meter by square meter by square meter. Yeah. And this platform, Peter, cannot be jammed or spoofed. It is air-gapped. There's no way to connect to it. It's not on the internet. It doesn't communicate with any satellites, doesn't need any satellites, doesn't communicate with any radio frequencies. Uh, it's simply listening to the Earth. It's one way, listening to the Earth and understanding the way that birds do, understanding the field right below it, and navigating with that.